Okay, I want to welcome everybody to Straight Talk. This is Kentucky State Senator Gerald Neal. And once again, we have uh, a very exciting exchange exposed. We will expose you to. Uh, I must say, uh, I'm sure you had a lot of good turkey and a lot of, of uh, Thanksgiving cheer. We're in going into the holiday season more forcefully toward Christmas and football and all that stuff is coming on. So this is it, right? We're doing it. But I have a special guest this morning. I have the Mary Leck of the city of Louisville, Kentucky. And we're excited about this because we have an opportunity to find out a little bit more about him. I know him uh, personally. I use the term. Uh, personally, we've interacted on professional levels and otherwise. I know him a little bit, but I want to know more about him, too. So we're going to ask him a question. Welcome, Mary Electric Craig Green Greenberg. Senator Neal, it's uh, great to be here. I'm uh, thrilled to be with you on this holiday weekend, and um, it's it's wonderful to be with you as always. Well, I, I'll tell you, um, it's been a whirlwind, hasn't it? We just went through. It, it has been. Look, look here. We, 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 and you, you win this election to serve as Louisville's mayor um, in the midst of a context of political exchanges that are just, I mean, so much is going on. I mean, think about the national elections that are going on. Think about what's happened. We This year we went through our um, redistricting, that sort of thing. This had an impact on various kinds of things. We've had, um, in, uh, if you look all across the, the country from Arizona to to Florida, to whatever, but we have our own set of circumstances here and we have a chance to have some leadership in you. So who is Greg, Craig Greenberg? Uh, tell us who you are. What motivates you? What's this all about? Well, first and foremost, I think uh, what motivates me the most is my family. Um, like you said, Senator Neal, I mean, just a family is the core of my life right now. I'm uh, talking to you from my in-laws house or with my wife's family who out of town and we don't see them as much. So every Thanksgiving, we try to be with them. Um, and really just having fam having family time to me is uh, is so important because I and I know that everyone uh, really wants what's best for their city. And so to me, that's where it starts from. And from there, really, um, you know, my upbringing uh, in, in my faith was about helping others and something that I really motivated me and what got me thinking about public service uh, was a concept that I grew up with uh, called uh, repair the world. And basically the concept is what every day, personally or professionally, what can we each do to make the world a better place in ways big or small? And my wife, Rachel, and I have always tried to live that. We tried to instill that in our two boys. And as I was thinking about the future, that that concept from my upbringing kept coming back to me. And, um, you know, you've been at this a lot longer than I have in public service. And you've been trying to make improvements to your neighborhood, to your city, to your state. And it's that, that same motivation that really got me interested in, in running for mayor because I felt like that was a position where my experiences could really serve this community well and, and I could help others improve the lives for themselves, their families, and for their future generations of their family. And to me, that's what it's all about. If you can help others, that's the most rewarding thing that any of us can do. Well, I'll tell you what, I, this is a special work. To you on um, straight talk. I believe this is your first time here. Uh, we've talked that is right. to folks. We talked to your predecessor and and others uh, uh, with respect to that. And I'll tell you, uh, it never fails when someone gets in the arena like this. Uh, that motivation, that fundamental thing of wanting to improve things, wanting to help others, uh, it's fundamental to every everybody I've ever talked to that's ever made this kind of step because it takes a lot of sacrifice. It, it certainly does. And, you know, I'm, I might be doing it for my family, but also, as you know, uh, family puts a lot of sacrifice when somebody runs for office. Just the hours, uh, the demands on your time, uh, the need to be places, but also just then all of a sudden people start talking about you again. And, um, you know, <laughs> that's not always easy either. And so that puts... Uh, different unique challenges on on your family, on your friends, on your colleagues. Um, and then we, of course, had a really uh, terrible, hard, tragic, um, you know, unfortunate incident earlier this year that was especially difficult for my team and my family. 
um, involving gun violence, which which really is is one of the things that's motivating more than ever is that is an issue that I really want to work with folks across the whole city on is what can we do to continue to reduce the amount of gun violence in Louisville? Um, that just has to end. Well, let me let me tell you something. <laughs> like you said, I've been in this a long time and uh, I cannot tell yeah. you how tenuous it can be, uh, how many times I've been confronted with circumstances with respect to this. But, you know, you, you got to move on to a, a, a you can't be intimidated by it. You got to go forward and all kinds of circumstances create these kind of results. But I'll tell you what, um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to call you Craig. You call me Gerald, okay? Please do. Okay. Deal. No, hey, let's just do it. You know, uh, let's go back into your experience. Now, I know you as a uh, an attorney, um, a, a business person, and, and I, I know you got big ideas, because I remember some big things that you've been involved in historically. Uh, tell us a little yeah. bit about your experience. What, what has brought you? What What's this package contain in terms of its value? Uh, for sure. Um, well, I started my career as I started my career as a lawyer, but really I spent most of my um, my professional career starting a business and putting together a team of people that started 21C Museum Hotels based on the founder, Steve Wilson and Laura Leah Brown, their idea. Um, and we, we started with the three of us and then we built from there. Um, and really we put together an amazing team that did great things. We, we innovated in the hotel world. We innovated in the art world and the hospitality world and the food and beverage world. We revitalized downtown Louisville on West Main Street. And then we did it in other cities around the country. And so to me, I... I like to think big. I like to break the rules and not do things the way they've always been, been done and, and find great people to, to work with. Because at the end of the day, you can't accomplish big things just on your own. You really need a strong team of people. And so I think that is one of my strengths, identifying people who can work well together and, and do big things. Um, so that's what I really spend most of my time in my professional world on is, is build launching and then building that company. Um, and also... I spent some time doing some, uh, you know, work in the community as well. One of the things I, I learned a lot from was my experience on the University of Louisville Board of Trustees. And there we got in at a really challenging time where on the surface, things were going very well for the university. Um, but there was a lot of, we, we thought there was a lot of challenges beneath the surface. And some other colleagues on the Board of Trustees and I started to expose some of the challenges that the university was having. Um, we pushed for greater transparency. We pushed to stop unnecessary tuition increase on the backs of students. And I feel like we were able to make some, some real change there. And the university now, which is such an important part of our city, is on a great trajectory. And I know you have sponsored support for U of L at the state level, and we need to continue to even strengthen that support. Um, and what I learned from that experience is that transparent organizations are stronger organizations, that we're operating in the public sector, and you can't do that privately. And not everything's going to always go the way that we want it to go. And it's not always going to look great for us. But I have found that when you're honest with people, when you're transparent uh, and you explain why things might have gone the way that they were intended to go and what you're going to learn from them and what you're going to do differently, that people respect that more than just trying to hide something and hope it goes away. So those are a few of my experiences that I think will serve me well in my new job as the next mayor of Louisville. Well, I'm going to tell you, you hit a few buttons there, but uh, I, I think <laughs> transparency, being upfront, saying what it is and saying what it isn't, but also doing your homework. You know, uh, that's right. In, in, in our business, we we often get misunderstood because uh, you have to dive deep and most people don't have to dive deep uh, in the decisions you make. So sounds like you're ready for that. You, you look like you are uh, positioned for that sort of thing. But, you know, let's, let's just get down to the nitty gritty here a little bit. Now, you got priorities. I know it. I mean, you, you got these aspirations. You got these ideas. You know, I know you're, you're an idea guy because I've seen you operate. We've been through yeah. various levels. What I, I'm, I'll use the term five top priorities, but I'm going to put this in the context of it could be three. It could be ten. What are your priorities? And, and okay. we'll uh, try to give them, you know, an one, two, three, four, and five, or something like that. What's the most important uh, in terms of what you're trying to do? I want to do. Sure. Well, well, the biggest is is you know it's a big challenge, but we need to improve public safety in Louisville. 
We need to reduce the amount of gun violence, as I mentioned, violent crimes, but also this crime period. And along with that, we need to make people feel like they're safe as well. And so, as you know, we're going to have a new um, interim and then permanent police chief in Louisville, but we can't just police our way to safety. And so we need to have a community that's working together to address short and long term solutions um, to make the city safer. And that's everything from a community. Uh, or all business owners, neighborhood leaders with four individual blocks and neighborhood investing in Morses. It's investing in uh, community programs that have been um, discontinued over the past several years, whether it's through the pandemic or otherwise. It's ultimately investing in the root causes of poverty. And so that, without a doubt, is the biggest challenge facing our city and my number one priority, broadly speaking. Um, I also really want to address the affordable housing crisis we have in our city. Right now, there are about 30,000 units short of affordable housing. And so I want to work with the nonprofit community, with the private sector, um, to support more affordable housing across the entire city. It shouldn't just all be located in one or two or three or nine neighborhoods. It should be located across the whole city, uh, near improved public transportation, near good infrastructure. And I think in doing that, I will also address the homeless crisis. So to me, that's um, sort of the the, the second biggest priority. Uh, Third is to make universal pre-K a reality. And I know this is something that you're working with Governor Bashir on as well in Frankfurt. When you look at what gives kids the opportunity to safe life, to lead a healthy life, to lead a life with opportunity, the earlier kids start a vocational journey, the more they have those opportunities to be safe and healthy and prosperous. And so I would love to put Louisville on the map for the right reason and have Louisville be a city where every three and four year old has access to pre-K, regardless of the circumstances into which they're born. And so we can do that. We can do that work. Like people who want to invest in cities make big ideas happen. And then I would say uh, fourth would be just cleaning up the city. Uh, whether you live in the West End, whether you live in the East End, in the South End, whether you live in the Highlands, anywhere in between. I think a lot of us would like to see our city cleaner. We would like to see the graffiti removed. We would like to see broken streetlights fixed. We would like to see the alleys clean. We would like to see these abandoned cars removed from the road in a matter of days instead of months. And I think that will help restore pride and more pride in the city, which makes us a safer city, a cleaner city, a greener city. It attracts economic growth. It causes people to want to invest in here. And so really making the city a cleaner city is, is my fourth. And I would say number five is, is making Louisville an easier place to invest in is our future is based on high quality jobs. And we need to make Louisville an easy place to invest for people who want to create good paying career path jobs here to work with organized labor, to work with the business community, to work with the nonprofit community, to work with the government. And there's a lot that can be done. So those, Gerald, but, um, you know, right now is not a time for incremental change. It's not the time for small ideas. It's a time to uh, have lofty goals and then try to make them happen. That's what I've tried to do my whole career. And I'm confident with a great team of people working with the state and leaders like yourself, uh, working with the federal government and our new congressman, Morgan McGarvey, and our senators, we can accomplish these things. We can accomplish them here in Louisville. And so that's why I'm so excited. I hear two words woven through everything you said. First, I hear the challenge. I hear bold. I mean, the the uh, the poverty that underlines a lot of the things that you are, are focusing on. But I also hear the word bold. And uh, I agree with right. bold. You know, you're not talking about let's tippy toe around and saying let's get in there. Now, I know that you just step into the doors. You got to put all this together. And you got to get your folks around the table, and you got to figure out how you're going to do this. You got to look at your capacities and all this sort of stuff. And you got a whole city uh, to deal with. Uh, but I'm interested in understanding some things about the poverty side of it. You know. Uh, West Louisville and some other parts of Louisville have been neglected historically. I think I can make that argument yes. important. Um, I think that there's been a change in that in terms of attitude and focus under the uh, the previous administration. And I guess all of it's sort of a 
evolving in terms of the framework of capacity and what you can do and what you got to do first, second, third. We can make an argument for all of that. But here we are. Here we are today. What can Craig Greenberg, what can Craig do? I mean, what do you really think we have the capacity to do? How bold can we be? And I'm talking specifically of West Louisville and other areas of the city that need that bold action. Sure. So a few things. Um, first, we can do a lot with affordable housing, whether people are looking to rent a home or or own a home. There is so much that we can do. So let's just Louisville. Think about the challenges with vacant and abandoned lots. There are thousands of them through the nine neighborhoods of West Louisville. We have to do a better job of taking those lots. And if they're in private hands and nothing's been done with them in years, we have to enforce our codes and regulations. We have to foreclose on them. And let's get them into the hands of families in Louisville that want to own a home. It will give them the opportunity to create generational wealth. It will clean up the block, which makes the block safer. And then it attracts even more investment. And so we, we ha- that's one specific area that we can and must do a better job of is with our vacant and abandoned homes. Yeah. Grocery stores, it's been talked about my entire lifetime, at least my entire adult lifetime. And there's no excuse that there aren't more grocery ser- stores serving the people of West Louisville or other low-income communities across other parts of the city as well. And so we just have to support Um, groups that are willing to put in grocery stores in these areas. And if we need to subsidize them to me, there will be a tremendous return on investment for the quality of lives of the people who live in those neighborhoods, but also it will attract more people to live there that are paying property taxes that are creating jobs. And so there'll be a great return on investment. Public transportation is another one, is we have to do a better job with our public transportation. Right now, I don't think it's serving that many people well at all. Um, it's for those who need who rely on public transportation or TARC to get to their job or to get to a doctor's appointment. Um, the routes might not always be convenient. It takes too long. They might not be reliable. And also for the disabled in our community, many who are also low income, um, that service has not been serving them as well. And so we need to really focus on what we can do to improve public transportation. Um, so those are just a few of the things that I think we can do it. And then we also need to attract jobs to where people live so that people don't have to travel a far distance, that they can work in their neighborhood, that the kids can go to school. Neighborhood. That's that's all part of. Then their parents have as many opportunities to be involved in extracurricular athletic opportunities, which is a great part of the growth. I know JCPS is starting to deal with that through their school assignment plan, um, but, but I'm, I'm really excited about them continuing to build new schools in West Louisville. I think all of these things are going to help. These are all things that we can and must. Do. And, you know, right now, one of the unique opportunities about coming into office right now is we just had this American Rescue Plan money, $388 million that's been allocated into our city. If not all of that is is um, used, then our, our administration certainly will put it to invest in, in Louisville wisely. But there are also some other federal programs, the EPA bill, the Inflation Reduction Act, that are giving us in the state with you, at the city where I'm working, a once in a lifetime opportunity to make investments that we never thought possible with public funds. And so I'm excited about the opportunity. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm excited about it, too. There is a lot happening right now. You know, but I keep thinking, you know, when I, and I think West, I live in the West, uh, uh, west of 9th Street, you might say. And the point is, is that I've witnessed through my life, not only that neglect in terms of the West, but I've come to the realization that it's going to take a heavy, heavy lift uh, to turn that around. Uh, I'm just wondering. How bold! I'm still looking. I, I hear you. You you said all the okay. things that that make me smile, that that makes me hopeful. But are we going to invest the types of resources that are necessary to not only deal with those deficits, those historical deficits, but also to empower people in these areas of the community? And I'm thinking stress. Absolutely, we have to. I'm I, I, Go ahead. You know, I, I expect um, I expect to be judged on our ability as a city to do that, to invest in neighborhoods. But as you said, also people. And so education is a big part of that. 
Um, you know, JCPS need to continue to advocate for full funding of JCPS so that they can provide their services. Universal pre-K is going to be part of that. Um, I want a strong in, in the West. Let's make Simmons College. Let's continue to invest in Simmons College and make Louisville a great HBCU town. I mean, what an amazing institution that is for our city uh, that has so much continued p- potential there. And I think the city should be supporting it. Right now, the city has not provided much city support for that institution. I think it can and should. Well, and then well, workforce development. I mean, sure. I mean, so that, that would be bold, the first city investment in Simmons College. Um, and then also um, – Workforce development, working with not just Simmons, but Bellarmine and Spalding and UofL and Kentuckiana Works. Goodwill is putting their campus down in West Louisville. What can we as a city do to support workforce development so that people who are are working right now have opportunities to do things that can uh, be a better paying, better career path job for themselves, for their family or future generations? You know, I don't think everyone has to go after high school to get a four-year degree. There are so many ways to earn a living these days and have a good career. And we shouldn't be forcing people in that way. I'm fully supportive of strong higher education. And that's the right path for many kids. And Evolve 502 that gives everyone in Louisville the opportunity to have a higher education regardless of their family's income is amazing. And I will continue to support that. But if that's not the path for everybody, that's okay. Let's, let's team them up with some of our organized labor unions. Let's team them up with Code Louisville to learn how to code. And, you know, a couple of years after high school, be making seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year and be on the path to a great career or have the ability to open their own businesses. These are the types of things that I'd love to see Louisville doing and that the great cities of America today are doing that are attracting people that have this high octane economic growth because of the exciting job opportunities. Those are the, that's the type of city that I want Louisville to be while still remaining true to its authentic self. Yeah. Well, you mentioned that we're getting ready to get a new police chief. Uh, there's been a challenge yes. in that particular area. It's, it's not a simple proposition, but certainly it's going to uh, rely significantly on improved and good and functional police community relationships. And if that relations is not strong and thoughtful and there's not some trust and some uh, effectiveness in that. Uh, how do we get there? Have we not been trying to do that all along? What are you going to do different or what are you going to double down on that you think is going to be? Important? Yeah. Well, I, I, to me, there are four key criteria for the next police chief. The first one, as you said, is, is trust. Someone that is going to have the trust of the community and the trust of the officers within LMPD. And that takes visibility, that takes engagement. Um, When you're in a leadership role like mayor, like state senator, like chief of police, you can't just, you can't do your job from behind a desk. Certainly there's time where you need to think, where you need to write, where you need to have internal meetings, but you need to be working with your constituency. And so to me, the chief of police needs to be someone who is active in the community to be building real relationships that then build that trust. And the same goes uh, with the officers. That's truly out working with the officers in their day-to-day job so that they know their chief is supportive of them and that um, you know they, they have the resources that they need to do their job, which I believe should be focused on community policing, which is working to prevent crime. So trust to me is number one. Alongside of that, um, which takes visibility in relationships, alongside of that is transparency. We've had a challenge in our community over the past years with not having transparency in city government, not having transparency in law enforcement. And to me, those days are over. Um, I believe that nearly all of the hardworking men and women of LMPD are doing it because they care about our city and they're, they're passionate about public service, just like you and I are. But not some people are going to do things that we wish they wouldn't have done. And when that happens, we need to be honest about it and we need to take action. Uh, We need to be very transparent with the community about what happened, why it happened, and what we're going to do differently moving forward. And I think that transparency builds trust as well. Um, I do think, as I mentioned, we need to focus more on community policing, working with clergy, members of uh, neighborhood leaders, small business owners, formerly incarcerated individuals, anyone who wants to help being a part of the solution to reduce the amount of crime in their neighborhood. And finally, I think the police chief needs to do more than just policing. Uh, We've been talking about 
bold things. We've been talking about investing in the root causes of poverty and many of the tactics that can be done to work towards that goal. And I think the police chief needs to be a part of that as well, because we cannot simply police our way to safety. Yes, that's an important part of public safety, but not the only part. And so it's not an easy job. Um, it's, it's one of the toughest jobs in city government, uh, right, right up there with being mayor. And so, but I'm confident we will find a, um, a strong individual with the right experience, the right personality, uh, the right commitment to this job along the lines I just said that, that can really be a partner of mine uh, and our city government um, and the communities to, to work to continue to lead us towards public safety. So oh, I, I, let me ask you this: I, I I can't disagree with anything you just said there, but at, at the same time, those ch it's been challenging historically in dealing with this. And we can say all these words. I'm not saying that it's critical of what you said. I agree with it. But the point is: is how do you really make that happen? You you're you're in an office somewhere, mayor of the city of Louisville. You got people on the street. I often say the most powerful individuals in the world at a given time is a police officer. <laughs> They, they've given extraordinary yeah. resources. They've given extraordinary leeway. They've got an extraordinary responsibility. And on the top of it, it's not easy. I mean, it, it can be dangerous, quite frankly. You're right. And at the same time, rewarding because, you know, you can give good results quickly, you know, depending on how it comes. That's right. But, but we got this gap. We got this gulf. Uh, it's historically been there. I'm wondering what different is going to happen. I understand community policing. What different? What difference can a mayor make in that situation? Well, well, I think a lot. I think one having the right person that can really start rebuilding those relationships, but also as we think about, we're 300 officers short right now. Yeah. We also have a police force that's nearly, if not more than 80 percent white. That doesn't reflect the community that we are as Louisville, and so as mayor with a new police chief, as we recruit these 300 vacancies to have a full team of officers, let's ensure that we're recruiting and retaining officers that are the best and the brightest, but that also reflect the community that we serve. That would make a change, I think, as, as people who feel like the police have historically not been on their side. If all of a sudden the police that they're interacting look like them, if, if they're in the Black community, if they're in the Hispanic community, and maybe uh, they're not totally comfortable with the English language yet. If they have police officers who are speaking their, their language and speaking Spanish, that will change the dynamics of the relationship that we have as a community with our police force, which will lead to improved trust and, I believe, improved public safety. So that's, that's one very specific area. Let's change the face of our police force. And that's one way that we can do it. Well, okay. So clean cities, I heard you. We're going to clean the city yep. to make sure that happens. You know, that's a tough job. It's tougher than you think. You know, you clean up and the next day things are back out. So you're talking about it in the community, Well, you know what city uh, public works will do and all that. But go ahead. Your yeah, so it definitely public works will be a will, public works will be a part of that. But this is one area, Senator, where we really need to rely on everyone's help. Because public works can clean an alley. And then, as you said, the next day, somebody can come and dump a bunch of tires. Dump, excuse me, dump a bunch of mattresses. We need the neighbors of, of our communities to really take, some, take a, some additional ownership of their own property, their own neighborhood, and work with others to, to, to keep their own areas clean. Now, the city has to help. The city has to be a big part of that. We got to get rid of the tires. We have to get rid of the mattresses. We have to get rid of the graffiti. Um, but then we also need folks to, once it is clean, um, to, keep, to help keep it clean. And we'll continue to do the street cleaning. We'll continue to do the big stuff. Um, but whether you, you're a small business owner who's just in charge of the area right outside on your sidewalk or whether you're a homeowner, um, and then when you see people littering, you got to call them out on it. And I know that's not always easy to do, but I think over time we'll, we'll change that, that culture. Um, you know, it, it's, it's amazing to me that when, my, um, when your kids clean up their room, it stays clean for a little bit while. You know, it doesn't immediately get dirty. Once, it's, once something is clean, it's easier to keep it clean than getting it clean to begin with. And I think that same approach we need to take. And so um, as mayor, I certainly plan to put in some of the uh, you know, physical hours to do that, to participate. And I'm going to encourage others to participate in that as well. So 
To do that, you got to have a team. You got to have a great team. You have to have an inspired team. You have to have a persistent and insightful team to make something like that to happen across the board, as I'm hearing. And you've assembled a, a what I consider a dynamic transition team who's going to help you put that together. So what are the skills you're looking for? I know that's, I guess we can sit here all day and talk about it, but in key areas, what kind of skills are you looking for? What are you looking for to carry out these things uh, that you're talking about, speaking of? So several things. Um, overall, I want everyone to share my sense of urgency. Uh, my wife calls it calls me impatient. I just say I have a sense of urgency. Um, but I, <laughs> I want people to really want to focus on action. There's not much that we still need to study. We know what the challenges are. We know what the solutions are. We know at least the proposed solutions are. Let's just start taking action. And so I want people who have that sense of urgency. Um, I also want people, I don't want, I don't need a whole bunch more people with the exact same experiences as me. People that have had different experiences than me uh, that can provide great insight, great advice, that can challenge my ideas where I can challenge them and we can come up um, with great solutions. I want people from across this whole community, um, people with different levels of experience, some who have been in the workforce for many years, some who are younger in their careers. We all, and you know, people that are of, of, of diversity across all, all spectrums. I really think that creates a great team environment um, that will yield the best results. And so that's what I'm looking for as we uh, put together our administration. And fortunately, through our website, newdirectionlouisville.com, we've had amazing um, applicants that have applied for uh, government positions at all levels in the administration. Uh, people that are within government right now that are amazing people that want different opportunities, others that are looking to come in from the nonprofit sector, from the private sector. Um, and so we will assemble a great team. Some people you'll certainly um, will, will be familiar names to you and others um, you might never have met before. Um, but that's going to be great because that'll create great dynamics. And we'll continue to add to the team as we move forward. Well, I look forward to that. Uh, that that's my father used to say. If, if you, uh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, if you have suggestions, please send them my way. I know you've worked oh. with many amazing <laughs> people in Frankfurt and Louisville. And I'll, I'll do that. You know, my father used to tell me, he said, you know, uh, the people at the top may get all the blame or they may get all the credit, but the key to success when you run in a big organization is the selection of personnel. You got to have the right people with the right skills that understand what they're doing to do the right thing, you know, and that's not as easy that's right. as it sounds, <laughs> but we'll see. It is. You need to find people oh. who are willing. Yeah. Yeah. So we have all witnessed the racial and partisan divides across this nation. And as a community, of course, we have not been spared. I'm wondering, what is it that you see that can be done to bridge that racial divide? And I guess some, you know, the parts of the divide. I think both of them, they even interact. You can't hardly separate them at times. Yeah. Well, I think that for someone like me, someone who's a white male that has had different experiences than you as a black male or black females or new Americans that are in this community, um, I, I need to do a great job of listening and then act on what I hear. To me, that is, is what I can and should be doing because the only way we are going to unify this community and heal the racial divide and address the racial injustices that have happened in our city for our, your entire lifetime, my entire lifetime is by listening and then, and then acting. And so that's what I've tried to do. Um, that's what I've tried to do for many years before I was uh, running for office, while I've been running for office, and now as, as the next mayor, I continue to, to do that, is to be responsive to what those who have been affected and negatively impacted say they need to move forward, to heal the wounds, but then to move forward. Um, I certainly cannot go back and change history, but what I can do is be a part of the sin to how we move forward in a unified way, in a way that is fair to everyone, that not only addresses the injustices, but gives everyone opportunity to succeed, that invests in everyone's neighborhood, um, and that can truly make the past injustices history and not part of our continued life. Um, and so that I feel a real sense of responsibility um, to do that Two of my grandparents 
uh, fled Nazi Germany just before the Holocaust. Uh, they fled the hate. And I grew up hearing stories of, of, about that and, and seeing the impact of, of hate, of discrimination, of hearing about what that can ultimately lead to. And I feel a sense of obligation of being the grandson of, of people who fled Nazi Germany and were able to escape that, start a new life. Um, I feel a sense of responsibility to do everything possible to end all forms of discrimination and hate in our country today. And I can make an impact here in Louisville, and I, and I hope and expect to be able to do that. And part of that is investment. Um, part of that is the justice system. There are so many different areas, and I want to contribute in every way that I can. Well, I trust in, 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 in uh, I shouldn't use the word advise because I know you can you receive this, but that you reach beyond those folks that you bring in and have advisors out there, you know, listening posts directly to your ear. You know, I think that's going to yeah. be very important. Yeah. I, I I totally agree. I think, um, you know, when I was running for office, I ran through all 623 precincts, literally. And I met people in every corner of the city. And people really give great feedback and great input and, and bring to attention issues that are unique to their area, but also issues that we're dealing with across the whole, whole city. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's critical as mayor to continue to do that, is just to, you know, go into stores, go into barbershops, go into... Um, go to parks and just say hello to people and, and find out what's on their mind. People are not shy. Uh, they'll, yeah. they'll tell you. And and I need to do a good job of listening and then acting on what I hear. Well, you're right about that. People are not shy. I can, shy. I can attend. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let me, let, yeah. let me go somewhere else. It's obvious. You're going to have to stay uh, establish relationships um, with Frankfurt. Uh, this is the largest city economic engine in the state of Kentucky and some like to say Commonwealth um, and it's important and yet we have we still have people living in other realities that are historically planted and the way they view Louisville the way they view their responsibilities uh, resources are finite everybody wants a piece of something and deserves a piece of something uh, to do better and utilize their tax dollars. How do you perceive right now the relationship between the city of Louisville and Frankfurt? And what do you think you can do to make it better or to continue it, whatever you think it is now? Well, I really think there is there is opportunity. And I really would, I hope to model my working relationship with Frankfurt the way that I think you have been such an effective uh, leader in Frankfurt, Senator, where being a member, at least for the past many years, several years in the recent past of the minority party, the Democratic Party, which doesn't have much input these days in either the state or the House, you've been effective at getting things done. Yet at the same time, you're not shy about standing up when you disagree because you've developed relationships with the leadership of the House and the Senate. Um, so that when there are important things to your constituency, you can find areas of common ground to work on, even when you're disagreeing about all of these other things. And so that's the same approach that I want to take. I want to have a strong relationship uh, with those in my own party, but also with senators, with President Stivers, with Speaker Osborne, with other members of leadership, where we respect each other and we understand that we're going to disagree about many things. But Louisville is important to Kentucky, and Kentucky is important to Louisville. And we've got to work together. So when it comes to issues of economic growth, when it comes to issues like pre-K that we just talked about and making that a reality, when it comes to things like in making historic investments in neighborhoods that have been historically neglected, we need the state support. There are issues in the justice system. Look at um, the issues we're dealing with now with the juvenile, um, the juvenile justice system right now, what's happened over the past several years in Louisville. We can only address that by working with the state. And that's impacting kids in Louisville, but it's under the state's control. And so we have to work together. I know we will have an incredibly strong partnership with Governor Bashir. 
He is an amazing governor that does has done amazing things, will continue to do amazing things, is very committed to supporting Louisville. But we also need the support of the legislature. And I've already reached out um, to leadership in, in the legislature um, on the other side of the aisle. And I think that we will have a better working relationship than we historically had. That's what it's going to take, um, is to find areas where we can work on together. And so I'll be seeing a lot of you during the session here after the holidays. Um, I hope you will reach out to me and, and advise me on things that I should be at, on areas that I should get involved with um, to help support things that you're working on. Um, but I, I do think we can improve on that relationship. And the same, the same goes for Metro Council. Um, we have to have a strong relationship between the executive branch and the legislative branch in our city, and regardless of political party. And so I've already reached out and I visited both the Republican and Democratic caucuses. Um, I'm doing a tour of, of districts with some folks that I hadn't gotten to during the campaign. Um, regardless of their party, we need to work together. We are one city. And so that is my goal. Wow. So I'm seeing, I said, it's more than a goal. I'm seeing vision here. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing, we want to take this from where we are to someplace else or go in the direction we need to go to accomplish A, B, C, D, and E. Um, but tell me this. I, I have to do this because in the context of uh, Breonna Taylor and the uh, what it suggests that we are historically and where we are now, uh, which is still up in the air as to where we are. How do you see where we are as a city? Are we going forward? Are we standing still? Are we thoughtful? Are we visionary? Do you see the components that we can pull together? Give us an idea. I think right now we are moving forward and really ready for serious action. What I have what I've sensed during the campaign and I have heard directly and seen directly even more in a couple of weeks since the election is there is so much pent up energy to help be a part of the solution, to help give back to the city that people love. People want to serve on boards. They want to get involved in the administration. They want to volunteer. They want to make their neighborhood better. They want to feel, but they want to feel empowered to do so. They want to feel like if they are going to spend their precious time, that it's going to make a difference. And so creating the environment where we can unleash that energy and excitement and willingness to, to help is, I think, going to catapult us really, really fast to address challenges that we've been talking about, but also to see some great things happening, to see more growth, to see more infrastructure being built, to see parks improving and being uh, better than they are today, the quality of parks, the location of parks, um, things like that that make people's lives better. I think we can start seeing that. So I think we are moving on the right trajectory, but I think we are on the cusp of, of really um, a turbocharged future to address some of these challenges. And that's um, that's why I'm excited. I think one of my jobs as mayor is to harness that, is to focus that on some of these key areas that we've been talking about put people together that would be great partners to work on projects and let them go do their thing. But what? we also have to be honest about the fact that right now it's still not great for a lot of people. And so part of our responsibility is while we're turbocharging our future is to make sure we're making life better for those who are really still struggling. Wow. We, you spoke earlier or somewhere in the conversation, we talked about the homeless. Um, uh, I've been across crisscrossed around across the United States of America and in some foreign countries as well. And um, the homeless are everywhere at some point. Yeah. I'm not talking about degree of, but it's it is an issue just about everywhere I've been. Um, what's the policy? Are we gonna maintain the same policy we have? And I'm not even coming forward trying to be critical or what. I know that's challenging. Yeah. But what kind of policies do you think we should be employing in that particular area? What should we be doing with those who are not in a position to um, give more stability to their own lives and end up homeless? So a few things. First, um, I applaud Mayor Fisher and his administration and the Metro Council for making historic investments uh, in addressing our homeless crisis over the past six to eight months with affordable, uh, sorry, with American Rescue Plan funding. So to me, that is a good first step. The cities that I think are dealing with it best have 
the housing first model, like the city of Houston, where they really focus on having more housing locations throughout the city that's transitional housing, where people can live inside, indoors, um, to, to help get their life stabilized and have a new path on life. That housing needs to be combined uh, with services, uh, mental health services, with addiction treatment services. Many individuals, most individuals who are truly homeless are dealing with uh, mental health and or addiction issues, oftentimes both. And so we have amazing nonprofit organizations in our city that provide those services, and we need to support them along, alongside of where, where individuals who are homeless are living to get them in a new working in a new direction. We also need to have services so people can make sure that they have their government IDs so that they can access government services so that they can sign up for Medicaid to pay for these services. Um, and maybe they need clothes to go to a job interview, um, whatever the services that they need. And so I think we need five, six, seven of these locations around the city, not just clustered in any one area um, to really help address the issue. And then at the same time, I also think that we need to make sure that the streets are safe and clean for everyone else who, who isn't homeless. And so moving people around from one underpass to another is not the solution. Uh, the solution is to provide this opportunity, this, this uh, enhanced services and transitional housing to individuals who are experienced homelessness. Um, and, and then also making sure that parts of the city where people are, are living or working um, that they also have a, a safe and clean environment as well. And so that's a challenging thing to do. Um, but we have a manageable number of individuals who are homeless in our city right now. And I'm confident with some more invest um, and the right people leading the charge here, we can really improve the situation for those who are experiencing homelessness and also for everyone else in the community that is not. Yeah, you know, you, you, you mentioned, I, I'm, I'm glad you did, about uh, the current mayor, uh, outgoing mayor, Craig Fish, Greg Fisher who I have no hesitation of saying, I think, you know, this, but, you know, this is not a perfect job. People have to make judgments and people, uh, you can't please all, but I think he's done a pretty, pretty good job uh, from my perspective. I, I'm, I'm just curious as to how you, not, not casting anything on him personally, but how do you view the programs that are in place, the initiatives are in place? Is there anything that concerns you that, that, you need to do away with or something that you see that you need to double down on and go forward with, or uh, I just, just a sense of, you know, it's been in my experience, yeah. mayors, they come in and negate part of half a part of what the previous mayor did and et cetera, et cetera. And in that context, the West end, they had all these little commissions that came together and we're going to, they've given results. We're going to do A, B, C, D, and E. And then they end up on a table somewhere, but I've seen, yeah. Quite frankly, some serious action out of this administration. I'm wondering how you view it, because you're the guy now. You're the one that's got to go forward. Yeah, so I, I think, um, you know, as you mentioned, I've got an all-star transition team that's helping right now. Um, I do expect we'll have some organizational changes that I think will make the city work better, uh, okay. be more responsive uh, to the community. Um, but one area that I do want to build upon is on the investment in homeless and, and also um, the investment in affordable housing generally is unprecedented in our community. And I want to continue to build on that. Uh, one other program uh, that was recently started that I think is a great start that we need to expand is um, a, a 911 deflection program, where when people call 911, it's not always a violent crime that's in progress. There's oftentimes uh, individuals that are dealing with a mental health crisis. And what this program does is that it sends out a mental health professional alongside a police officer to address that, to give better service to that individual who is in need, who might be at risk of harming themselves, who might be thinking of contemplating suicide. Police officers are asked to be jack of all trades and be experts at everything, but, but there are other people that may have their training to deal with certain things. There are others, um, Eugene, Oregon, uh, Denver, Colorado, that have implemented these programs citywide to amazing results, better results for the individuals that are seeking, that are, that are having their own personal crises, better results for the community because there's less risk of an escalation. Um, and it also saves money that our officers can also be focused on community policing and preventing violent crime while other 
professionals are serving those who have mental health crises that are also emergencies. And so there was a start of that program um, in partnership with U of L um, and with uh, with Spalding. And again, I think that's a program that we can build on. So there certainly are some programs in the city um, that I think we can that we need to expand on and, and build on the positive progress. There are some things when it comes to the way that we've done economic development in our city. Um, I think I'm taking a hard look at that. We'll probably uh, restructure the way that we've done that. I think there might be a, a, a way, at least for the future, that I believe will better serve our community to create good paying career path jobs, to focus on local businesses that are already here and helping them expand and grow while still attracting new businesses here. affordable, inclusive, clean, safe, healthy, green, um, that's different from the way uh, Mayor Fisher's administration did that. So, um, but I'm looking at the future. To me, looking yeah. backwards is, isn't is particularly helpful. So I, I hope that answers your question, but that's sort of the way I see it. Well, no, no, I, I, the first thing you dealt with, I'm, I'm 100% conceptually with that. I think that is common sense. And, and you made the point where you were saying, hey, look, not everybody's trained to do certain things. Certainly police officers are not trying to be health professionals, you know, in that particular regard, let's yeah. have some unique uh, career themselves. But um, some of these other areas, obviously you got, it's, it's, it's important to take a hard look and adjust accordingly to what you see, because you can get so, you can start off with good intentions at a certain point and then way off course if you don't look critically and make adjustments accordingly. No, I, I buy all that. I haven't heard anything yet, though, that, that, that shakes my boots in terms of uh, <laughs> uh, substantive actions that are being undertaken that you riled up about. Maybe you're holding that close to your chest. I don't know. But um, <laughs> I just hate I just hate to see I see this over and over again. I see it with governors. I see, you know, they go in these directions because they knew and they got to make their stamp. Uh, you know, to me, doubling down on those things that work and employing those things that enable us to go forward better and also eliminating those things that definitely don't work and definitely not beneficial is important to the job you have. So it doesn't surprise me. Look, I, I agree the things that are working well, I want to, I want them to keep working. Um, yeah. Where, you know, when you talk about yeah, different areas with the things that are working should keep moving forward. And, and if they need more resources because they're working, and they can work even better with more resources, then I'm going to support giving them re more resources. I have no pride of authorship. We don't just need to do things because they're a new idea. If they're working, by all means, let's go all for it. The only thing I don't like is when people are saying, oh, we're doing this because we've always done it that way. Right. And we should be doing things because they're working, because they're effective, because they're That's making right. a positive impact on people's lives. Yeah. And so as long as there's a good reason for why we're doing things, then I'm going to continue to support that. That's what I wanted to hear. Now I got the button. You hit the button. <laughs> so okay. but I do ask a lot of, I, I'm going to ask a lot of questions. I want to make yeah. sure I understand that they're working. I, yeah. I'm not shy about asking questions. Well, I'll tell you one thing I think you'll bring to the city, and I think it's going to be important, um, uh, a, a spirit, an energy, you know, and I think that energy is important. I think we've had energy, but you bring a, a different iteration of that that energy i think i'm gonna i'm gonna watch you <laughs> i'm gonna see how okay good because i think that's important you know people look at you they they draw all kinds of conclusions they don't know anything about you for real they don't know what you're going through they don't know what you're dealing with at the moment but at the same time you got to project that confidence you got to project that energy stuff i think you might be able to do that craig from what I know, well, I got a lot of energy right now. My my two sons and I, we ran a five mile race on Thanksgiving morning, and uh, so I'm going to really? take that approach to energy every day that I come to work as mayor. Well, I think that's important. I think that's important. So I want to go into to something else because I want to, uh, I guess, get a little bit deeper into the subject matter. We as a nation are at a you know people have this question about democracy being threatened and that we're at the precipice of something and that we have to deal with this. I'd just be interested, without asking any specific question, just get your view of where you think we are as a country, as a nation, where we are as a commonwealth, and where we are as a city. 
The floor is yours. All right. Uh, small question there, Senator. Uh, <laughs> Nobody said I was fair. On, on all of <laughs> On all of those regards, I feel better now than I did a month ago before the election. Mm. Um, I I think that the election results showed um, in many parts of the country, uh, people rejected this election denial syndrome that's that's plaguing our, our country now. And so I am more optimistic than I was a month ago. You know, citywide, I think we um, and even. I think we handled the election extremely well. Um, I'm unaware of any major issues. I know that on Monday, the, uh, the board of elections will be uh, certifying the elections. I I will tell you that I had um, my things started to get much more real for me personally. uh, When my opponent in the race, mayor Bill Deer have called me uh, on election night uh, before I I went out with governor Bashir. Um, to to speak to our supporters that evening and um, and declare victory, and I really give him a lot of credit for doing that. I, I really respect um, him for that call for the way he ran. We both ran spirited races, um, and I think that's what campaigns are about. But then when the campaign is over and the votes are counted, it's time to to move on. And so I I respect Mayor Deere uh, for the way he ran the race for that phone call. I thank him for that, and I hope there are ways that we can move forward together, and hopefully that is a model uh, for our city. In our state, I, I again, I think in, in general, things went pretty well. I do have some concern about some individuals who are running for statewide office next year and some of the things that, that they're saying, although I have confidence in our, our governor that he will uh, prevail and that's, um, that some of this election denial and, and threats to democracy will be will be uh, tempered in our state. And then I'm, I'm hopeful that continues for the country. Um, the next big test will be in two years with the presidential election, uh, with more U.S. Senate and House races up for election. Um, but I'm hopeful that over the next two years um, that people uh, move away uh, from this threat to democracy that is is a huge threat. When you think about the challenges we are facing as a country and as a world. We need to have a common set of of values and organizing principles. We can continue to debate about tax policy, about women's reproductive rights, about you name the issue, but we have to agree on on the ground rules for how we're going to organize ourselves as a government so that when things happen like they're happening in Ukraine, we can band together about that. There's no one in America that I believe thinks that what's going on there is right, that thinks Russia had the right to aid another sovereign country in, U- in Ukraine and do what they're doing and knocking out utility lines and just making the country dark just to inflict pain and torture and misery on a country. We need to have our democracy strong so that we can continue to address these global threats that are happening and will only continue to happen, unfortunately. So um, I am hopeful, uh, but I'm also concerned at the same time. And I think that's, if we all remain concerned, um, that will then, I think, help steer us in the right direction. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just heard from Mary Leck, soon to be the mayor of Louisville, Kentucky, Craig Greenberg, with a hopeful note with resolve and clearly with a vision and the energy to carry that out. I think we got something going on here. Mayor Craig. Thank you. Mayor Leck, thank you for coming to Straight Talk and sharing with us. Uh, we'll invite you back and hope you'll come back and talk with this, us sometimes for our viewing audience. Um, and uh, I will, I'm, I'm excited too, I have to say. And I'm looking forward to a successful administration uh, God bless you, strength in what you do, and uh, we'll get there. I like that hopeful note. Thank, Take care. Thank you so much, Senator Neal. I look forward to working with you, and next time we'll do it together in person. We'll do it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Great talk. And as I always say, do the right thing. <laughs>